Uh, before we consider today's scripture reading and today's message, I want to thank Clint and Savannah for leading us in worship. I want to thank uh, Allie and Bra- Blair and Austin for running all the technology. I want to thank the skeleton crew who's up here at the church, making sure that we're all able to worship together. I want to thank uh, the huge numbers of members of our community who have volunteered their time and their energy uh, to reach out, to be part of the pastoral care, connecting with members of our church who may be shut in or vulnerable or lonely during this time. I am so incredibly thankful for you and for all the ways in which you make the ministries of this church possible. My name is Lance Marshall. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and I'm the typical speaker here at the gathering worship services. And like everybody else, my life has been very different the last few weeks. Has your life been different? My life's been very different. Uh, Of course, I'm staying at home uh, full time, doing all the work that I can from there and trying to adjust the rhythm. We have four kids. A couple are usually in elementary school. A couple are usually in preschool. We're all home all day long. And so we're doing our best to stay busy, stay active and stay engaged. And uh, we have had some interesting opportunities because of this. So our oldest kid is having his bedtime pushed back a little bit. And he typically has between an hour and an hour and a half between when his younger siblings go to bed and when he needs to go to bed. And we hit a major milestone in our life in the last couple of weeks. And that is our oldest child is finally old enough to watch the Lord of the Rings movies. And so we've got a lot of time to kill at the house nowadays. And so that's one of the things that we've been doing in that window of time between when his siblings go to sleep and when it's time for him to go to sleep is we watched the Lord of the Rings trilogy. We started with the original movies. We ran through those. The good news, there's plenty of time to kill in all those. And then it was time to go watch the Hobbit trilogy. So we started watching the Hobbit movies and something really interesting happened when I was watching those Hobbit movies. And so it reminded me of something uh, that I remember coming out. I saw shared on social media when those movies were first coming out. So if you haven't seen the Hobbit, maybe you've read the book, you know that the beginning uh, includes this big scene that's happening where uh, Bilbo is hosting this unexpected party of dwarfs and Gandalf. They're all together in his house. Blair's gonna put a first picture up on the screen and it gives you an image of what you might see in there. It's a little bit dark here, but it's a very crowded image. And Gandalf is physically larger than all of the other people because they're all very short in their mythical world. He's uh, much taller. And so the way that it actually was filmed didn't look like this, of course. They had to use green screen. So Blair, if you'll show the next image, this is what it was actually looking like as they were filming it. And when the DVDs came out a little bit later, included on the commentary was some of this. And Ian McKellen is that actor who was playing Gandalf. And as you can see, he's by himself and he's entirely surrounded by green screen. So what they were having him do is act by himself for days on end. And then all the things that were going on around him in the movie were later added digitally. What I didn't realize was this was incredibly hard on him. And the reason that you see in this picture, his hands over his head is because he's literally breaking down in tears while this photo was taken. In fact, he shared later on in the commentary uh, that it was devastating to him. At this point, he's crying and what he's saying, the microphones can pick it up when he doesn't think he's being recorded is this is not why I became an actor. He became an actor because he loved people, because he loved interaction, because he loved the stage. That's why he fell in love with acting not sitting by yourself, surrounded by green screen, trying to act alone for days on end. He hated it so much that he was breaking down into tears. Thanks, Blair, you can take that down. And I was thinking about that this week, of course, because this week has been hard and the week before it has been hard and the time that's yet to come may also be hard. He didn't get into acting, Ian McKellen didn't get into acting because he wanted to be by himself in a room trying to act through technology. Can I be honest with you? I'm not a pastor because I want to do all pastoral work in ministry through a camera lens or through a webcam or even over the phone. I want to meet with you. I want to be with you. I want to pray with you. I want to have a cup of coffee with you if you're sick. I want to go to the hospital and be with you. I want to see your family. I want to see your kids. I want to see your teenagers. I want to be in space with you. I want to stand next to you while we sing. I want to stand in line with you as we come forward to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion from the same loaf of bread. That's what I want. And I don't have it right now. It's really hard and Can I be honest with you? I'm grieving. I'm grieving in the same way that he was grieving in the midst of acting. And I know we're doing the right thing. 
we are absolutely 100% doing the right thing. And it's hard. I'm grieving. I'm grieving the loss of seeing you on Sunday morning. This is my favorite time of the week. We're supposed to have a full room right now. I'm grieving that loss. I'm grieving the loss of getting to go to the place of work that I love every single day, this church, this sacred church. I'm grieving not physically being with you, having cups of coffee, having those conversations. I'm grieving and there's no other way to describe it. I wanna ask you, are you grieving anything right now? You may have seen it shared on your social media. An article came out that has been being passed around everywhere because it's just naming what so many people are feeling. It says that discomfort that you're feeling right now is called grief. That thing that's hard for you right now as you try to adjust your life on the fly, that thing is grief. Are you grieving anything right now? I've got some friends of mine who are grieving because they operate a business and they had to let go so many of their beloved employees because there's, there's no work for them and there's no money to pay them and they're grieving. Of course, every one of those people is grieving. Anyone who depends on a paycheck to support their family is grieving or is full of fear. Anyone who has a business is grieving or full of fear. Anyone who's living off of assets is grieving or full of fear. Are you grieving something right now? Are you someone who's approaching the end of your senior year of high school and all of a sudden that's being uprooted. Are you grieving? Are you someone who had plans for college and the summer and the fall and that's changing? Are you grieving? Are you someone who just had a routine in your life that gave you comfort and stability and that you loved and that's all gone? Are you grieving anything right now? And have you given yourself the permission to say, yeah, I am. I know I am. And I know you probably are too. That's what I want us to think about and name as we come to our scripture reading today. So through this season of Lent, this season of preparation before Easter, we're focusing as a church community on these sayings that Jesus does throughout the gospel of John. He gives these incredibly important teachings where he says, I am. And then he tells us something about himself, but also in doing that, telling us something deeply about who we are and what we need him to be. And he's given the teachings, I am the bread of life and I am the gate and I am the good shepherd. And the last few weeks we've been digging into those different things. And this week he gives us a different teaching and that's where we're gonna be today. We're gonna be in John's gospel, chapter 14, verses one through seven. We're gonna put the scripture reading up on the screen, but of course, I hope that you have a physical copy of the Bible with you that you underline or highlight anything that jumps out to you or that means something to you today. At the conclusion, I'm gonna say God speaks to us through the reading of scripture. And I want you to say out loud wherever you are, thanks be to God. Hear these words. John chapter 14, verses one through seven. Don't be troubled, Jesus says to his followers and also to us. Don't be troubled, trust in God, trust also in me. My father's house has room to spare. If that weren't the case, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me so that where I am, you will be too. You know the way to the place I'm going. Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? He wants direction. And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on, you will know him and have seen him. God speaks to us through the reading of scripture. Thanks be to God. These scripture readings come to us in a difficult time, in a scary time, a time, quite frankly, I hope none of us ever has to live through again. But one of the things you need to realize is these words also come to Jesus's followers, his disciples, the people who have walked with him, who have traveled with him, who have witnessed him working miracles, and have also witnessed him, frankly, get into some very dangerous and scary situations. And at this portion of John's gospel, What Jesus is beginning to do is to prepare them for what happens after he is gone. Jesus is beginning to prepare his followers with the understanding that this manner of us being together is not gonna last forever. There's gonna be a time where I'm no longer physically present with you. And yet my work is gonna continue in you and through you. I'll still be there for you. And he's beginning to teach them how that is and how that will be. In the scripture reading that we have today, what happened in the verse before this is Jesus told them 
this path that I am on right now, this ministry that I am doing, this faithfulness to God's call is going to lead to my death. He's begun to tell them that. He's also dropped some terrifying news. One, he says, one of you has turned against me, is actually gonna be my betrayer, is actually gonna be the one who leads to my death. And the second thing he says immediately before this, and the one that you think is the most reliable among you, the one that you think is the most steadfast, the one that you think is the most steady, the one whose faith inspires you the most, the one who gets it the most, when push comes to shove, when all the chips are on the table, that one is going to turn his back on me too. This is the incredibly scary word that he's just given to them in the midst of confusion and difficulty and not knowing what to do. That's what he's told them. And that's the backdrop for him saying, trust in God, trust also in me. Where I'm going, I make a place for you as well. I wouldn't tell you that was the case if it wasn't true. So really understandably, one of his followers says, we don't, we don't get it. Where are you actually going and how do we get there? Give us the direction. Give us the five steps. Tell us exactly what it is that we need so that we can go with you, be with you, be protected by you, be made safe by you. Tell us exactly what it is that we need to do or to accomplish in order to have that promise be true in our life. Tell us is what Thomas is saying. Tell us the way. That's when Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life that's being promised to you. What he's saying is you don't need to do this perfectly. All you need is me. Do you understand? Do you understand what he's saying to you right now? Do you understand what he's saying to me in the midst of my grief? in the midst of my frustration, my sense of loss over these very real and important things that I'm just grieving the loss of. Do you know what he would say to me? Do you know what he would say to you? The things that you're experiencing, the real losses, the real anxieties, the real difficulty, they're all true and they are all incredibly hard. And yet something is more true. That is that Jesus knowing what you're going through, knowing what you're facing, knowing the source of your anxieties is telling you, I promise you, he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life you're looking for. And all you need is me. Let that be a word directly into our anxieties and our griefs today. And I don't want to just leave you there. I want to leave you with a little something more hands-on. And that's how do you actually live into this? How do you actually do something about this? How do you actually let this make a difference in your everyday life? Because I got to be honest, not too long after this is over, you're probably going to fire up a news website and you're probably going to see some scarier news. And not too long after this, you're probably going to get caught back up into whatever series of anxiety or loss, or let's be honest, grief because it's grief that you're feeling right now. Go back to earlier in the message when I asked, what is it that you're grieving? What is it that you're grieving? For me, it's this community with you. For me, it's the rhythm of of getting to be and work physically at this place. For me, it's the people and the time and the energy and the connection. I'm grieving that loss. What are you grieving? What are you grieving today? And what I need to do and what I need you to do too is I need, to be, I need that to be what you take to Christ in prayer. And when I take to Christ in prayer, what I mean when I say that is not saying, Jesus, take this and erase it all. Saying, take this problem and fix it for me. That's not what I mean. What I mean is take the grief, take the emotions, take the pain to Christ your Lord in prayer. Pray, Jesus, I am grieving this loss. I am hurting this pain. I am fearing this thing. And I am so caught up and wrapped up in this emotions and this loss and this grief. I do not know what to do next. Take that to him and receive what he gives back to you. Because I promise you what's going to happen 
if you let yourself feel those feelings, if you let yourself dwell in that pain for a little bit, if you let yourself be honest enough, be vulnerable enough with yourself and with God to say, this is what I'm grieving and this is what I fear. And if you take that to Christ in prayer, what you will begin to hear back is the understanding that I am with you, he says. And I promise you, I promise you, I promise you to actually be enough. Jesus, talking to his disciples before his arrest, before his crucifixion, before his death and his resurrection, says to every one of them, I am the way that you are looking for. I am the path that you're trying to follow. It's not complicated. It's not difficult. It's just me and it's real. It is true because I am the truth. And that was true 2000 years ago. And that's true today. It is true and that truth can't be challenged. And I am the life. I am the life. I am the life that you're trying so hard to find and then protect. But the truth is it can't be taken away from you because I am here for you forever. He tells us he is the way and the truth and the life. And it is true. So no matter where you are, no matter how you're hurting, no matter what you're grieving together as a church, let's take that to him in prayer. Let's pray. Great and loving God, it's so easy for us to experience this moment in our lives as unprecedented, for us to experience these feelings as completely and totally unique in our lives and maybe even in all of your creation. But God, you have reminded us that there is no height nor depth nor east nor west that separates us from your love. That includes Whatever has happened in this moment and whatever has happened in all the moments before, you promise us that when we in our times of grief and loss are most desperate for a way, are most desperate for direction, are most desperate for your promises that you've already given us what we need. Jesus facing difficulty for his disciples, Jesus facing the uncertainty that they would feel, Jesus facing their vulnerability, their loss, their grief and their fear, says to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. And he says that to us as well. So God, wherever we are today, physically distant from each other, but united by technology and by your spirit, help us to be shaped and molded by those words and work of Jesus today. As together we pray the words that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.